And our second speaker will be David J. Bernstein, the 700 pound purple gorilla, with fish manual, uh, basic, speak with power five to seven minutes. The speaker break one is an attorney and is an author and um, is a play writer. Welcome David Bernstein. Thank you, Madam Toastmasters. Fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. My job today is to speak with power. What does that mean? When I thought about that, I thought it meant that I should speak about something that I was passionate about. And I had my speech all worked out. And I'm going to take a little digression, thanks to Joseph. Okay? One of these days, Joseph and I are going to have to have a debate about the role of government in our lives. He spoke rather denigratingly about the idea of socialized medicine, about how people who want to be given things, who want to be on the dole, just taking and taking from our government. But how many people have experienced the pain of a chronic illness that has driven their family into bankruptcy? How many people would agree with the concept that we need to take care of the neediest among us? These are things that I believe and I care about. And we can talk about it at some point in the future, Joseph. And you left a whole bunch of money on the floor. Make sure you clean it up. I will. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, I digress. Things that I can be passionate about are things that bother me. And things that should bother you too. We are sheep, ladies and gentlemen. I am a sheep. I admit it. And I'll tell you why I say that. Who remembers when Jimmy Carter was president and the price of gas went over $2? Who remembers getting angry and people marching and people screaming and the newspapers writing about it again and again and again and pounding on it? And nobody thought it was Jimmy Carter's fault. He was a peanut farmer. He wasn't even in the oil business. But now our gas price is $4. And nobody's making a peep. Nobody is saying to the president, Sir, you're in the oil business. Can't you do something to help? Why are Exxon and Mobil making bigger profits than they've ever made in their lives while most of us can't afford to get to work? I don't know, but I think it's a good question. Here's another one. And this is what I mean by the 700-pound purple gorilla in the room. Let's take a look at the Florida education system, public schools to be specific. Who's aware of what the budget, the Florida budget did when it came out last week? Hmm? It whacked it big time. It cut the guts out of public education. Cut the guts out of it. We are now, fellow Floridians, we are now the 50th state in the union. Rock bottom. Did last in terms of per capita spending per student. What, what are we? What kind of third world state are we? Are we Kansas? Are we Nebraska? Are we Puerto Rico? Apologies to anyone who's from Puerto Rico. No, we're Florida. We have a booming visitors population. We are a relatively rich state. And yet, we're dead last in terms of spending on public education. When I first got to Florida 14 years ago, I heard about the lottery and how wonderful it was and about how so much money from the lottery was being pumped into public education to make it better for our kids, for our students. But nobody told me that while the legislators were pumping money in with the right hand from the lottery, they were taking money out with the left hand. I'm not sure where it's going. Someone just told me yesterday that $500 million is being taken out of the judicial system. As an attorney, that's part of where I work. Where is the money going? I don't know. But I know that the Sabres and the Panthers and the Miami Dolphins are still getting huge tax rebates. Doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand it. And what I don't understand even more 
is that nobody's talking about it. I, I don't see journalists writing about it, screaming about it. I don't see people marching in the streets. Why is that? Because we're sheep. We've been beaten into submission. We do not stand up to authority anymore. Somehow or other, in the course of, I don't know, the last eight years or so, we have been taught that whatever we are handed by the government, we have to accept and just sit down and smile and accept. And that's what we've been doing, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know anyone in particular who's lost their home, but I know there are a lot of people losing their homes. Anybody in the room lose their home? Know anyone who's lost their home? But we all know that Broward County almost heads the list of municipalities in this country where homes are being foreclosed. Thank you, Ann. <laughs> so what's the point? Ladies and gentlemen, I think I said this in an earlier speech, we've got to stand up. We've got to say, to take a, a note from the movie Network, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Let's write some letters to some legislators. Let's make some phone calls. Because as long as we sit back and take it, and it's a word that starts with S and rhymes with fit, as long as we sit there and take it, we're going to keep getting more and more of the same. So let's see what we can do to make a change, shall we? Madam Postmaster, thank you.